Hi, Diane. Welcome to Seasons of Motherhood. Hello. I'm Hello. so glad to be here. Yes, I am very excited. It was one year ago that I was being interviewed by you. So this is very fun to have the tables turned. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. It's lovely to see your face, even though I know we only live 15 minutes apart. So we're going to have totally. to... Yes. Yeah. A coffee is due. <laughs> a coffee is due. Yes. Yeah. yes. And a Thank long chat. God. Oh, yes. We have a lot to catch up on. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes. Life is full. Life is busy, but we will find a time. Mm -hmm, so for sure. Yeah, but I really appreciate you being here and uh, thank you for being willing to share the blog post, which I can't wait for your readers to dig into after they've watched this episode. Um, and I think I'd like to just introduce you so people have a little bit of a background to who you are. Uh, you have been married to Harv for 42 wonderful years. So congratulations. That is just oh, thank fantastic. you. We're only at 27. So you're like... <laughs> You're like what I'm aiming for, Diane, yeah, right? Yeah, a little, and a little more gray, a little more yes. experience. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. A few more grandchildren. <laughs> yes, that's true. Well, and you are, you have five children and then mm -hmm. you have 14 grandchildren. Um, mm -hmm. And you have been, you homeschooled for 25 years. That is just remarkable because I won't hit that 25 year mark. I'll get to like maybe 17, I think. But yeah, so you've been doing that for a while. And you trained as an NILD, which is the National Institute for Learning Disabilities, um, as a therapist. And then you continued your passion for learning with a particular focus on neuroplasticity of the brain, which maybe you can share a little more detail in a minute on how we can improve our capacity for learning. You are the director of GearLinks Educational Therapy and you support students and the moms and the parents that are working with their struggling learner and you become their coach and their mentor and their teacher. It's been amazing. So you have quite a lovely, impressive career behind you and going forward still. And we have been blessed by it personally. Um, that has been transformative for uh, some of our children here. So again, thank you for being here. So maybe you can share, maybe we'll just start off the bat explaining a little bit what you just talked about with the neuroplasticity of the brain, just because it's fresh on my mind. I was going to talk about it later, but maybe we just talk about a little bit about that right away and then we'll go from there. Yeah. Well, it's called, NILD is the National Institute for Learning Development. It used Development. to be Pardon me. Abilities, and they've now changed it. I think a lot with the whole learning in the last couple of decades that the brain can change. Mm. And that neuroplasticity, meaning it's not static, but that it changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that we can have the hope and we can work our brains to be able to make those connections. And so we don't just say, oh, well, they have this, this learning challenge, but we can say, well, what can we do to help that? And what can I do to help myself mm -hmm. As you know, instead of this, you know, the, even the whole growth mindset versus static, right, right? To say, or fixed, to be able to say, I can work on this and change my thinking process. Right. And so that has been so wonderful because so many times we, I meet with parents, I myself had, had you know, worked with my own five kids where sometimes you're like, are they even making any connections right. here? Yes. I think um, what you've just yeah. described is actual hope because I think as a mom, especially even being a homeschooling mom, when you become the, the key educator and you're stuck and you feel static and then there is no motion and you have, you have no idea what to do to actually encourage the learning process. And so what I love to hear is that there is hope in the learning process, that you can succeed you can meet those markers that you never thought you could meet or I mean with your child specifically and I know for our family personally it was a brand new thing for me and this was way back I don't even know how many years now quite a few years 12 years yes, yes. <laughs> um probably <laughs> something like that because yeah. um, that's where we first met was when one of my kids was struggling with with mathematical concepts and reading and there was just a block and I remember my husband and I saying okay, you know what? This is beyond you. And as a teacher, you have to humbly go, you know what? I can't do this. I need help. And then providentially, God brought Diane into my life. So <laughs> you were able does. to, yes, as as he does. Does. Um, but you were able to explain to me what could be done 
to walk this particular child through and it doesn't happen overnight and I think that's one thing that as parents you have to realize and you know and you want it to happen right away and it didn't yeah. but it did happen over time consistently which is with anything you do you you can't figure it out overnight so I watched my child increase over and over and over again and it was not an easy journey you know but we stuck with it yeah. and yeah so that was pretty I often cool. I often compare it to going to the gym for your brain mm. and that that that's what educational therapy really is we don't go to the gym and say man I I just need to be in shape because I'd like to run a marathon tomorrow right we know that it's going to take a lot of work Yes. To train those muscles. Yes. To to be able to build my confidence. All of that. And it's the same with the brain. Mm -hmm. It doesn't just happen. No. Um, and I guess I'd like to also comment even on your your position as a parent, because mm -hmm. I know that position <laughs> only too well. Where we feel like it, you know, I'm a teacher. I'm a parent. I know this kid best. Why can't I make this happen? Right. And I think that we have to accept that at some point it is a block. It is. And we've we've come to our end of our capability and we need someone to hold us along the yeah. way. It wasn't yeah. like you couldn't do it. Right. But it wasn't the best thing for you at that time. Yes, absolutely. You could also have learned and trained and, and done it. Yeah. But, I mean, I myself learned and trained to do it with my child. And then I found another therapist and said, mm, how about you do it with my child? Right. Yes. That's a hard thing to learn. You um, have to recognize that. And often it takes somebody else saying to you, you know what? It's okay. Yeah. And it's okay. You need, you need help and having outside help is going to make the difference because you can't do it all as a mom and you know that yeah. and actually maybe that's a good point in time to ask you what started you initially on your homeschooling journey and how that kind of led into after your 25 years how it actually led into <laughs> gear links and um, where you are today i mean i know that's a loaded question a couple yeah. of words, but what was well, that initial start like so i would say you know god surprised me in that you know i began we began our homeschool like i was an ece teacher at the time mm -hmm. you know we had children we began our homeschool journey you know in 1989 mm -hmm. you know yeah, it wasn't well known no <laughs> nobody had heard of it but in my head i thought this is weird i'm going to send my kindergarten kid to you to teach while I take teach your kid like maybe right. I could just teach her and so right. that sort of began the homeschool journey mm -hmm. and we thought we'd do it for a year and then we thought we'd do it till they're eight and then we thought we'd do it till they're high school yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's so> <laughs> I love I loved it was it hard it was very hard was there yes. times I wanted to send them off a hundred percent just like everybody else <laughs> yes. um and then we got to the end, our youngest, what, what learning was a little different for him. For many of them, like of the five, it wasn't like there was just him. But right. that one, you know, when I got to that point, I was like, this is really hard. And how come he's not getting this? And I must, I must not be doing it right. And I must totally have that, blah, 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 blah. I called it the blame game. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and I found an ILD and that, that point I knew that that was the lifeline being thrown to mm -hmm. us and I also knew immediately I loved their philosophy I loved their the way they thought about education and it's mm -hmm. so jived with homeschooling mm -hmm. so yeah I just it you know we continued on on that journey and and when I found it I knew it was a perfect fit for us and for me and when I you know what would I be when I grew up just kept in my head like I love this. Never did I dream that I would be working right. with students, like children again. Right. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I got. I trained, um, began GearLinks Educational Therapy, mm -hmm. and the need is great. Mm -hmm. And at this point, we have five therapists that work with me, and 
I get calls regularly because mm -hmm. of parents, parents of kids in school, mm -hmm. parents of kids that are homeschooling, right? And parents who know their kids so well and say, oh, this kid has great potential. We just yes. have to get over this hump mm -hmm. <laughs> to get them there. Exactly. Um, just like my child and just like yours. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We just have to give them the tools to get them there. Yes. I think that's the whole. So yeah, it was a, yeah. a wonderful journey. Well, I think it's key with the um, providing tools and the support because moms often feel very alone and that they're the only one. And it's not only like you blame yourself, there's almost a bit of shame that goes with that because you feel like it might be your fault or you're not just doing enough. And it's not what it is. Every child is unique and different in how they learn, whether it's visual, kinesthetic. And each one of my kids, as you know, you have five, I have five. They're all unique and different. And they all mm -hmm. needed different pieces of curriculum. Some of it was similar, but I think what motivated me was my decision to just like, okay, what is this path? What is this path? And I know you did the same thing. Totally. And I kind of watched and listened to you, how you were able to walk through and give me that hope. Just wait, one day they will be 16 and then yeah. we'll be 20. And then one day they're going to be old enough to reflect on that it was worth it. Because at the time, you know, it was not fun. Oh, it was not. And and it's true. One day, one day they're going to go, oh, I did learn differently. And you helped me make, find the path. Yeah. Yeah. For them. Yeah. Because they have to internalize it. Yeah. And I think that in in those moments, especially when you're homeschooling them and you have a little more extended time, you're able to see where their gifts are. And then you can really load on where they're gifted so that they're really successful in a, a lot of areas. And maybe they are as successful in other areas, but that's where the the balance comes. And I know that you taught that to me. You, you're like, OK, like, here's what he he's good at. You should be doing this and this and this focus and focus and focus. So we, you were always very positive and encouraging. And so that was wonderful. Couldn't have done it without you. Oh, that was wonderful. <laughs> Okay, so I have a great quote from your blog I want to read you and then maybe you okay. can comment on it. Um, so you say, as I look back over my years of mothering and continued mothering, let me assure you that it is worth every lost minute of sleep, every ounce of energy and every missed career opportunity. So maybe you can talk a little bit about that and why you chose to add that into the blog post. Because I'm a grandmother <laughs> and life has continued and you realize the the journey of mothering doesn't end when they're five and you send them to school and it doesn't end when they're 13 or 14 and you send them to high school and it doesn't end when they're finished high school and they do their first semester at college and university mm -hmm. and it doesn't end the day they get married <laughs> your mothering continues and that is really a gift and that yeah. is the relationship you know from this moment of birth when you're that's how i started the mm -hmm. blog mm -hmm. but so beautiful when you hold this child and you have these dreams you just can't even believe like oh, i'm i'm responsible for everything with this child it's so true <laughs> and the pressure and responsibility can be overwhelming when you call me about your child that's struggling and you feel like you're a failure and you haven't done it and all of those things mm -hmm. um because you will. Mothering is mm -hmm. like that. We carry them so close to our heart. Mm -hmm. And so when your adult child, you know, gets sick and has a long, you know, long term disease or your adult child mm -hmm. you know, has relationship struggles or loses their job or yeah. you are still mothering. Mm -hmm. They yeah. may not. It looks different. Yes. You know, but you will always be their mother. And, yes. and I think that's why I, I really realize it continues for a lifetime. It really does. Yeah. It's, it's like our, it's the seasons that we're in and it just, it's different ages, different demands, different hopes and desires. And then as you know, when you, your kids are adults, which are, I have a few adults now, 
Yeah. Uh, so I'm starting to catch up to you, Diane. <laughs> I'm starting to get there. I don't think I'll ever really catch up because I want to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. And and now there's you know grandchildren, and now there's parenting questions, mm -hmm. and now. Mm -hmm. I maybe even know less than I knew before because I see, you know, life has changed. Mm -hmm. I did as a mother, you know, research has changed. And so what right. they're doing as mothers is different and respect. Very different. That's not going to be the same as what I did. And isn't this, I didn't raise my kids the same as my parents did. Right. Right. Um, but, but continuing that. And of course I, you know, I, I love, I love, I will always love helping them mm -hmm. find ways to teach and reach yes. their children yes. as they learn. Yes. Well, that's, okay. I know you will. I know you will. <laughs> You'll continue to do that for other moms as well, because that is just a role God has called you into and into mentoring and using the gifts that God has given you to help educate people. Because even thinking back when, what it was 12 years ago, you, you never know it all. You're always learning. And I think is for moms, it's so important to have that mindset that mm -hmm. you've never reached that place. You mm -hmm. always need to learn. And I love what you've just said to us that mothering continues and you need to keep that mindset and focus no matter what. And then to be open to learn because parenting is going to be a little bit different. Although the Bible doesn't change, thank goodness. Yes. You've got a great foundation with what God says and, and helping to raise our families on the word of God. Um, but our understanding our brains is a constant learning curve, constant mm -hmm. learning curve. So, yeah. And we learn, have to learn how to let them go, how to let them fall, how to pick them up again, how to be there when they need you. I mean, it, it mothering is a lifetime for yeah, sure. It is. Well, mm -hmm. you say too, and I love this, um, that first of all, you see moms, you say, I see you and you say you are giving and receiving love. And your fur, because you've referred to the Velveteen Rabbit, which yeah. I just love so much, um, <laughs> that is being rubbed off in the process, but you are becoming more beautiful and more real with each passing day. One day at a time, one hour at a time, one minute at a time. Um, and I wondered if maybe you could leave some encouragement for a young mom that might be watching this, struggling with, am I going to homeschool? Or maybe I have a struggling learner. What would be my next steps? And maybe she lives in Wisconsin. Maybe she lives here in Ontario, but what would you suggest to that mom today? Well, when I wrote that, I was thinking of my daughters mm. and their mothering and the phone calls that I will get from them right. to say, this is really hard. Mm. And me to say should they say you know you made it look easy well no because you were a child <laughs> that's <laughs> it was not easy <laughs> um, and so i you know as i say to them mothering's hard and yes i see you i see you up at night it's sleepless nights it's it's you know one of my kids will say to the other like where are you getting your energy from your toes because it's like you have to dig so deep some days mm -hmm. to yes, say you do. I do. Mm -hmm. um, and so my encouragement is that you have to do one day at a time and and I think most of all relationship 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 yeah. it's not about getting all the subjects in it's not about getting your diploma it's not about it's relationship relationship with god relationship with family mm -hmm. and relationship with themselves yes oh for sure understanding who they are to say i am unique mm -hmm. i i have gifts that god has given me mm -hmm. that are meant for the world i just have to find them and and you as a mom are there to help them on that journey discover Mm -hmm. what is in store for them and yeah. so my encouragement is to say i see you and you can do this mm -hmm. yes one day at a time one day at a time one step at a time yeah it's so true and, and you talk about mothering at a time yeah yeah well it's it is only one step at a time and sometimes you want to have the long range and you want to see ahead 
but then you that's when you start to fall down and i know i did that many times you keep thinking ahead ahead and you forget to be in that moment what they need right at that particular time when you're struggling as a mom so yeah you talk about it being a privilege and your title is called the gift of mothering and it really is a gift um but and all good gifts do come from the father of, of heavenly lights we know that but it doesn't mean it's going to be easy um, right. so i really appreciate your honesty and your wisdom today i think this will be such an encouragement to so many moms out there that are just maybe on the verge of discussing it with their their husband or something about homeschooling or getting extra help for their child so yeah. i think it's wonderful that you've shared today and i um, hope it just continues to encourage and multiply and benefit other people so thank you diane for uh, you are so welcome it is my passion and my joy to support others so oh, i can see it in your me. eyes i can see it in your smile and i personally know <laughs> from personal experience uh, so i couldn't have done it without you so thank you so much for all the encouragement you've given me over the years too all right well bless you and we'll look forward to a real coffee excited see you soon <laughs> okay bye, bye.